In October 2023, football history was made when FIFA announced that Morocco would join Spain and Portugal as co-hosts for the 2030 World Cup. This marks Africa's second time hosting the tournament after South Africa in 2010. But this historic moment comes with one major complication. Both Spain and Morocco are fighting to host the prestigious final match. Here's why this matters. FIFA requires World Cup finals to be played in stadiums with at least 80,000 seats. While Spain has several venues that meet this requirement, Morocco currently has none. But they're not backing down from this challenge. Construction is already underway on what will become not just Morocco's largest stadium, not just Africa's. Largest stadium, but the largest stadium anywhere on Earth, the Hassan II Stadium in Casablanca. Today, we're going to examine every aspect of this massive project. We'll look at why hosting means so much to Morocco, the engineering challenges they face, the controversial funding behind it, and what happens to this giant stadium after the World Cup ends. This is more than just a sports venue. It's a national statement. Morocco's journey to host the World Cup has been decades in the making. Their first bid was in 1994, losing to the United States. They tried again in 1998, losing to France. Further bids in 2006 and 2010 also failed. Their most recent attempt for 2026 saw them lose to a joint North American bid. But why does Morocco keep trying? There are three key reasons. First, football is deeply embedded in Moroccan culture. The national team, known as the Atlas Lions, made history as the first African team to reach the World Cup semifinals in 2022. Second, hosting would boost Morocco's international prestige and tourism industry. Third, it accelerates infrastructure, development across the country. However, FIFA's selection process has consistently highlighted Morocco's infrastructure limitations. While the passion for football is undeniable, the country's transportation networks and stadiums haven't met FIFA's standards until now. The 2030 co-hosting arrangement finally gives Morocco its chance, but with major conditions. Hosting a World Cup requires moving millions of fans between cities smoothly. Currently, Morocco faces several transportation hurdles. The country primarily relies on just one major international airport, Mohamed Vai in Casablanca. During peak times, this single hub could create bottlenecks for arriving fans. Domestic transportation presents another challenge. While Morocco has made progress with projects like the Al Barak high-speed rail connecting Tangier to Casablanca, many proposed host cities lack robust public transit systems. Cities like Agadir and Marrakesh would need significant upgrades to handle World Cup crowds. The Moroccan government has announced ambitious plans to address these issues. By 2028, they promise to double capacity at key airports including Marrakech and Agadir. The high-speed rail network will extend south to Marrakech and east towards Ojda. New metro systems are planned for Casablanca and Rabat, but these projects must be completed alongside stadium construction, all within six years. The timeline is tight and any delays could jeopardize Morocco's chances of hosting high-profile matches. This pressure helps explain why they're pushing so hard on the Hassan II Stadium. Having an undisputedly world-class venue strengthens their case for hosting the final. Now let's examine the crown jewel of Morocco's World Cup plans. The Hassan II Stadium will seat 115,000 spectators, surpassing all existing stadiums worldwide. For comparison, Barcelona's Camp Nou holds 99,000, while Michigan Stadium in the U.S. holds 107,000 spectators. The chosen location is strategic, about 38 kilometers north of Casablanca in El Mansouria. This places it roughly halfway between Casablanca's airport and the capital city of Rabat, making it accessible for international visitors and local fans alike. The stadium's design blends modern engineering with Moroccan cultural elements. British architecture firm Populous, known for designing Wembley Stadium and the new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, leads the project alongside Moroccan firm Wallaloo Plus Choi. The most striking feature is the aluminum lattice roof, designed to resemble traditional Berber tents while providing shade for all seats. Inside, the stadium will include five levels of premium hospitality spaces, including a royal suite. The playing field will be surrounded by botanical gardens, creating a unique atmosphere. 
Advanced cooling systems will combat Morocco's summer heat, similar to technologies used in Qatar. Construction began in August 2024, with an aggressive completion target of 2028. Satellite images show massive earthworks already underway at the Ai Bai, 100 hectare site. The project requires moving over 3 million cubic meters of soil, enough to fill 1,200 Olympic swimming pools. Such an ambitious project inevitably raises questions. First is the cost, approximately 500 million for the stadium alone. When including upgrades to six other venues and transportation infrastructure, Morocco's total World Cup budget approaches 5.2 billion. Funding comes from multiple sources. The Moroccan government has committed 2.5 billion, with the African Development Bank providing 2.5 billion. The remaining $2 billion will likely come from international investors, though details remain unclear. Labor conditions are another concern. Morocco serves as a transit point for African migrants, leading to worries about worker exploitation, similar to Qatar's World Cup controversies. The government promises strict oversight, but with such tight deadlines, ensuring fair working conditions will be challenging. There are also questions about the stadium's legacy. After the World Cup, it will host matches for local clubs Raja Casablanca and Wydad AC, but their average attendance of 15,000 represents just 13% of capacity. While concerts and other events are planned, maintaining such a massive venue long-term won't be easy. The Hassan II Stadium represents Morocco's boldest infrastructure project ever. If completed successfully, it could redefine the country's global image and cement its place as a football powerhouse. But the challenges are equally massive, from financing to construction timelines to long-term sustainability. What do you think? Can Morocco pull off this historic project in time? Let me know in the comments. Should FIFA award them the final over Spain's more established venues? And is building the world's largest stadium worth the investment when so many other needs exist? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're fascinated by mega stadiums like this, you'll love our other videos on Giga Structures. First, check out our detailed comparison. Santiago Bernabeu versus Spotify Camp No Renovation. Which stadium is better? We break down the epic upgrades at these legendary venues, then watch 2030 World Cup Final, three possible stadiums to see where the big game might actually be held. Both videos are waiting for you on the channel. For more, Deep dives into mega construction projects around the world. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.